welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to remove unwanted noise caused by high ISO. All right. And we have a really cool tool that I'm going to show you how to use that. That's the uh, denoiser tool. I'll go through all that. I'll go through that and also show you a couple other tools we'll use to enhance that. Now, before we begin, let's take a moment and thank our partner, Fuji Films, for helping make these episodes possible. Fuji reminds us to stay safe, stay creative, and stay at home. All right, guys, and we're back. Now, the images I'm going to show you, um, I, I took this at my little girl Erica's graduation party. This is her sister, Alyssa, and her boyfriend, uh, Alex. Now, this is the original image. And this is what we're going to turn it into. Let's look at the info. This was shot at 3,200 ISO. It's so funny. That says... 3200 ISO, but that's his ISO 1000. I know it was shot at 3200 ISO. I, I can't believe the camera did that. Um, it was late at night. We, everyone was about to leave. And Alyssa made the comment, hey, we didn't take pictures yet. So we went outside around 8 o'clock at night, and we took these shots. So some of the shots I'll show you are at 10,000 ISO. So now, let me show you what we're going to do with this first. And then... I'll go back over and show you how I do all my edits, all right? So here we are, the original image. The first thing I like to do is just, let's just make sure we get the color straight here, because that's gonna help us. I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, and I'm gonna click on just a piece of the white, the white of his eye. Now what that just did, it helped color balance uh, the scene for us. So I have that set. And then AI accent. And we just get this good. Now, where does digital noise live? Digital noise lives in the shadows. So it's not that 3200 ISO is bad. It's just that it's bad when you're photographing at night. Because look at the gray spots or, 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 or you know, the gray spots. That's your digital noise. So let's come out here, come over to denoise. Now, the luminosity is the gray spots that you're seeing. So those gray checker uh, spots, that's your digital noise that's gray. That's your luminosity noise. Color noise typically happens when you're dealing with skies, and you'll see the noise, instead of it being gray, it'll be different colors, like usually yellow, orange, or yellows, reds, and blues. And those happen... Let's say um, when you're photographing the sky in a tree, almost like it's fringe, the fringe that's around it, all right? Well, look at this. Before, after, before, after. Now, and in doing this, the image is going to come off a little soft. So... That, that right there was a the bulk of it. So that, that took us a whole, what, 30 seconds to fix it. So if you have images with high ISO, right away, go for the denoise. But what we also want to do is come over here and use this portrait and skin enhancer. Because that's going to smooth the skin. And any remaining leftover noise is going to get feathered, you know, into the skin itself. And since we're here... Why not enhance the eyes? And just in case, any of the circles. There we go. There we are. We have a lot of people coming in from Japan. It's great seeing all my friends there. Big Mike from England. All right, so here we are before and after. Now I'm going to give you one more trick. If I were to photograph this with my, my camera, my Nikon D810, the D810 is a beautiful portrait camera, but it's horrible when it comes to low light. So if I use that on a scene like this, the noise would be almost unbearable. 
So the trick that we would do for this is we'll come over to the uh, essential tools and we're going to quickly convert it, boom, to black and white. Now, it's so funny. My son always notices that when <laughs> I have a really cool black and white photo, the first comment he'll make is, oh, let me guess, either you messed up on the focus or there's too much noise in the image or colors are competing too much with it. So you decide to switch it to black and white. And he's majority of the time he's correct. So here we convert it to black and white. <coughs> so what we could also do is come over here, add a little bit more detail to the image. And since we converted it to black and white, well, why not ride that train all the way through and add some film grain to it? So I'm going to add just a touch of grain and I'm bringing it back in. So now it's going to look like, look at that. What a cute couple, huh? All right. So what that just did by adding the little touch of grain or film grain to it is it gave it that black and white nostalgic feeling and that worked out really good. Good. David says, smart kid. <laughs> All right, so here we are. So we have that set. Now, let's do another one. Um, all right, so here's a family portrait. And actually, here's a good example on why I like to take birth shots. Notice the older sister is looking away. These two right here crack me up because either he's blinking and she's straight ahead or it's the opposite. So this is what it's going to end up looking like. Why don't we do this? Instead of the favorites, I'm going to show all photos. All right, ready? Here we go. All right, so we'll use this one. But I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. There, here, look. He's blinking. Yep, he's still blinking. Oh, where was it? There was her where he was blinking and she wasn't. And there it is, see? So here he is. His eyes are shut, her eyes are open. Her eyes are shut, his eyes are open. So that's why it's important to do um, burst shots like this. All right, so which one do we, we fall upon? This one right here. All right, so here we are with this one here. Let's look at the noise. Look at that. 10,000. Right. And actually, I got that right that time, didn't it? Yep. That 10,000 digital noise. Can you believe this? Um, let's go back. Was that the one? Or was it? We'll do this one. Once again, yep, 10,000. And I handheld it at 1 60th of a second, which was fine. All right, so we have this all set. Now, because we have Johnny in the scene... I don't want to go overboard with the skin softening. So the first thing we'll do like we did before is I'll come in, color correct. Now, uh, let me move myself out of the way. Notice this, because it's such a large file, we're going to be um, image, it's going to be processing it quite a bit. So there, so we have the color back. And I want to give it a little more warmth to it right here. That's good. Now, AI Enhancer. That brought back good some of the shadows. And now we can come back here to denoise. And we can clean up that 10,000 ISO. And again, it's not going to be perfect, but it's it's going to be a lot better because otherwise I would have missed those shots. Here, let it refresh. There it is. And you can definitely see the noise in the scene. And this is where, again, I may end up switching this. And I'll check with the family. Switching it to either black and white. Cropping it in much tighter. Right about here. 
All right, and then probably add just a touch more like we did earlier. Um, let's see. Detail. There it is. All right, and, and we could try, if we want to get creative, is just to bring back just a little bit of the color. Look at that. All right, we can also do that too. Before and after, and once again, um, we can even throw on a LUTs. If we now, it's just a part. Now, what we're doing is just deciding how we can be creative. Um, let's see. Yep. So we can just throw throw on a different LUTs and things and different things to get creative. So now, keep in mind that that Fuji camera, the uh, XT3 that they sent me to loan to try out for this stuff. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to talk about doing fashion suit shoots with it. And it was so cool that it was able to find the face and also find the eye. So I didn't have to focus and recompose. I was able to get the composition the way I want it. And then, boom, it found the eye for me. It found the face for me. It used its artificial intelligence to help me get the shot. And... With stuff like this, just because the camera could go up to 10,000 ISO doesn't mean I always want to shoot at 10,000 ISO. If I have to, we have tools that can fix this. And that's where the denoise tool is going to help us tremendously. Or here, I should have gone outside probably about an hour earlier when the sun was just that perfect golden hour. That's when I should have gone. Since I didn't, the second best choice is to be able to fix it with the noise tool. All right? Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And again, I'll see you at the next coffee break.